Hello students, welcome to Abhipedia. Today I am going to discuss how different phases of business cycle affects the economy. You are uh, uh, reading it every day in the newspaper, India is going through recession, sometimes you read that there is recovery phase when Mr. Obama, the President of USA, gave, out, gave the bailout packages, that was the recovery phase. So the question comes in everybody's mind, what is recession? All right, so I'm Alka Verma and uh, today in a very simple way, I'm going to explain you different phases of business cycles. All right, now business cycles, they are fluctuations in economic activities that an economy experience over a period of time. The business cycle that is characterized by expansion and contraction Expansion means economy experiences, economic growth, and uh, contraction means a period of economic decline. So expansions and contractions, they are cyclical in nature, and that is the reason they are known as business cycle or they are known as trade cycle. As you can see it in the diagram here, uh, we have different phases of business cycle. We have boom, we have recession, we have depression, we have recovery, so I just want to discuss what are the characteristics of different phases of business cycle. So I start with uh, the first, uh, I start with boom, all right, that is also known as expansion. And uh, this uh, phase of business cycle, it represents the best stage of prosperity and uh, objective of each country is to achieve economic growth, uh, full employment. So this cycle, this phase, this boom, that represents high economic activity, that represents full employment situation and we all know that all countries of the world, they are obsessed with economic growth. If it's a developed country, they want to maintain it. If it is an underdeveloped economy or a developing economy, they want, they want to become more developed. So boom is the best phase of a business cycle. And uh, some of the main characteristics of boom or expansion is that income and production, they are maximum. Level of income is very, very high. There is, uh, an, there is an atmosphere of optimism. Everybody is very optimistic. Profits are very high. Economy reaches expansion by removing unemployment. So rate of uh, employment is also very high. And then uh, prices are very high wages, the rate of interest, the rent, taxes, they are also very high, cost of production is high, profit margins are very high and rise in the prices of shares, there is optimism, then banks pursue liberal credit policy and economic activities like production, consumption, investment, they all expand. So this is a very glorious phase of business cycle. Every country wants to achieve this but it does not remain always uh, expansionary phase in an economy. So then we have uh, recession. You can see it in the diagram also. Recession is a phase that when during prosperity, uh, entrepreneurs start making investments. And when all investments, they, they make investments in many ventures. And some of the ventures, uh, they are not so profitable. So optimism starts giving way to pessimism and investment slows down and in recession there is decline of economic activities and nowadays you are reading it in the newspaper India is facing recession now let's understand the features of recession first the, there is fall in income there is fall in output then workers they are rendered unemployed prices they begin to uh, begin to fall wages fall profits fall there is contraction of bank credit Income falls due to less investment. Overall demand of the economy, that also uh, falls. Then sh there is sharp decline in the stock of goods. Then feeling of doubts and fear. St uh, fear starts coming in and it leaves, leads to pessimism. So this is the phase of recession. After that, the third phase, you can see it in the diagram, is depression. That is the third phase of business cycle. Now, during uh, depression, once the process of recession starts, it gets momentum and ends in depression. And it is called hopeless depression. There is 
hopelessness in the economy and uh, level of output falls uh, unemployment is severe prices are falling under depression all economic activities that is income output employment prices profits interest they all fall they all become less and there is a tendency for all these economic activities to shrink to contract and uh, great you must have heard about the great depression of the 1930s that was witnessed by germany this is what it was and uh, what i want to tell you here why depression is considered bad the reason is that during depression it leads to high unemployment and unemployment is not only an economic problem it's more a social problem because it gives rise to various kinds of anti social activities theft decoity uh, moral degradation of the society and that is the reason why depression is considered a phase where people are depressed all right level of output and income is low unemployment increases wages interest and cost decline uh, volume of profits also decline then uh, yeah, price level falls demand for credit falls demand for consumer goods falls because of that invest low level of investment is there people grow pessimist there is element of pessimism in the entire economy and then Uh, moral degradation as i have already told you and this is what happened in uh, germany in 1930s so this is a phase of uh, depression now after that we move on to the fourth phase you can see it here that is recovery and uh, recovery depression phase cannot last forever and uh, economy gradually moves from depression to recovery and the wave of recovery once initiated it uh, tends to feed itself and the features of recovery is replacement investment results in increase in income and investment there is also increase in output employment increases demand for consumption goods and production production goods start starts increasing then prices begin to look up there are more profits cost increases all right and investment increases demand for bank loans and advances increases so in a way pessimism gives way to optimism and uh, so these are the various phases of business cycles now the question comes uh, whether we can control them whether we can eliminate them we cannot eliminate them but with the methods to control them we can uh, control the severity of the problem but we cannot eliminate them trade cycles or business cycles they are going to happen in the economy the only thing is we have to learn how to tackle them so we can tackle them with the help of monetary policy uh, then we can tackle them with the help of fiscal policy and some direct action can also be taken so that we can tackle various phases of trade cycle now let's start with monetary policy now monetary policy refers to regulation and control of flow of credit supply of money and rate of interest so during boom or during inflation we have uh, the uh, central bank of the country pursues dear money policy and it's suitable so in that case what happens bank rate will be increased uh, uh, crr cash reserve ratio uh, slr that is statutory uh, uh, liquidity ratio so they all will be raised by the central bank and this way uh, dear money policy will be able to control uh, inflation as well as boom in the economy and during uh, recession and depression naturally uh, cheap money policy will be adopted and bank rate will be reduced uh, crr will be reduced slr will be reduced required margins will be reduced these are the various uh, tools which are uh, used by the central bank in the monetary policy so this way with the help of monetary policy we can uh, we will be able to control the severity of either boom or recession or depression in the economy but i would like to point out here that only mon monetary policy alone is not very effective uh, it cannot succeed in controlling business cycle we also need to have fiscal policy and uh, both of them should go hand in hand we need to have a mix of monetary as well as fiscal policy then only we will be able to tackle various phases of business cycle now what is fiscal policy 
fiscal policy relates to revenue and expenditure of the government and it's uh, done through the budget and uh, fiscal instruments uh, they are there and with the help of fiscal instruments we can control the occurrence of business cycle and uh, now among the fiscal instruments generally they are classified as built-in stabilizers and discretionary measures built-in stabilizers they are basically uh, they start operating in the system automatically so i'll be discussing that what are they and then discretionary measures that means these are the measures undertaken by the government to control various phases of trade cycle now among built in uh, in fact built in uh, stabilizers these are also shock absorbers and they reduce the intensity of the business cycle like for example we pursue progressive rate of tax now what is progressive rate of tax as the income base increases the rate of tax also increases so during boom naturally the progressive rate of tax is very high and with the money that the government gets government uses is for the welfare of the people and uh, during uh, depression naturally the rate of progressive tax becomes less so that people are left with more uh, money more money means more aggregate demand and then naturally with more aggregate demand there can be more income more output and more employment there can be more investment as well and uh, then second uh, built in uh, measure that we have that is unemployment insurance that is given by many economies so during boom naturally uh, unemployment uh, insurance is less and during depression phase naturally the amount of unemployment benefits they are more unemployment insurance they are more so these are our uh, uh, built in stabilizers in our fiscal policy now discretionary measures this discretionary measures means they are specially designed to control the various phase of business cycle like for example uh, they are taxation policy as i have already told you that uh, during boom rate of tax will be high during deflation rate of tax will be low then public expenditure that is another tool with the help of which the government tries to control different aspects of uh, business cycle now during a boom naturally public expenditure will be reduced to some extent and uh, during depression the government has to increase the level of public expenditure this is what was recommended by lord jm keynes who was a very famous macro economist then public debt that is another instrument so during boom when people have lots of purchasing power so government borrows from the people and this way purchasing power is curtailed less demand less demand price level will fall so during boom inflation can be controlled this way and during depression naturally the government returns the money with interest to increase the level of demand aggregate demand of the economy these are the three uh, tools with the help of which uh, various phases of a trade cycle can be tackled and after that we have direct controls there are some direct controls uh, methods also with the help of which we can tackle the various aspects of business cycle one is the price control that is fixation of the prices of the essential commodities our government can pursue uh, price support uh, policy and with the help of which various aspects of trade cycle can be controlled then we have uh, quantity control this relates to distribution of goods through fair price shops that is known as that can be done through rationing and uh, that can also be done through licensing policy and then wage control that can also be undertaken during various phases of trade cycle during depression naturally uh, we have to be liberal in giving wages and during uh, boom naturally we have to control the amount of wages so this way these are the various methods of direct control how we can control how we can tackle various aspects of business cycle besides that what i want to conclude here is that uh, is that we need to have a policy mix of monetary policy fiscal policy and direct control methods then only we can tackle various aspects of business cycle very effectively alone monetary policy cannot be very helpful it's very helpful during boom but not during depression fiscal policy is very helpful during depression but not during boom all right 
So we need to have a policy mix of monetary policy, fiscal policy and also direct control methods. Then we can tackle various aspects of business cycle. And uh, students, if you have liked it, uh, please uh, don't forget to share and like the video. And uh, again, I just want to uh, remind you that this is Alka Verma. I'm a professor of economics and with, ex with an experience of 23 years. So I just want to make these concepts very simple for you. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to Abhipedia and keep watching Abhipedia and keep watching different uh, topics so that it helps you in your preparation with UPSC. Thank you.